So I used to have this big problem whenever I went on Zillow, I didn't know exactly what to do. Was I supposed to be looking for homes for sale or homes for rent? Which one was actually gonna be a better idea? Some people said, for example, renting was a waste of money. People said that buying a property outright was gonna be a bad idea. Which one is the right answer? And which one should you actually be doing? That's what I'm gonna break down in this video to figure out, hey, for sale or for rent? Which one exactly should we be doing? Now, I got a call last week from my rich uncle, and he tells me, Tommy, I know you just bought a house, but I think you're going to regret it. And he told me basically, mathematically, you should have grabbed that money and you should have put it to work. And I was like, yeah, but that's not really what I was doing. Buying a home for me wasn't really a mathematical choice. It was more like, I want to have a home so I can have that security and not have to worry about that part of my life anymore. So mathematically, I really want to break down the benefits because this problem is one of those problems where basically there is no right answer and there is no wrong answer, but there is a clear, terrible answer, which is don't take action and don't worry about your financial freedom, all right? However, my uncle does very well from Myself. I do very well for myself. So which one is actually for you? So this video, I'm not trying to coerce you to take action. I'm trying to lay out exactly what things look like so that you can make a decision for yourself and not worry about what I did, what he did, or what anybody else out there is telling you to do. Just give you the information to make the right decision based on the facts, okay? And as always, guys, do me a favor and smash the like button on top of also subscribe because I post videos all the time on investing and also make making more money. Now, the only way to answer this question is to go ahead and basically answer it mathematically because numbers are our friends, okay? So the big thing is this, okay guys? If you wanna buy a home, it's going to be expensive right now. So I wanted to use a very real example with things that are actually going on right now. So for example, I did some research and I basically found out that if I go over to Austin, Texas, which at one point was one of the places I actually wanted to move to, well, the big thing is that right now, the rent is around $1,826. Now that means that it is a lot of money to rent something compared to though, here's the information people don't wanna talk about, scroll all the way down here, the average home basically sold for like around $521,000. So it's more like $1,800 a month, or $521,000. And I know it doesn't sound like a lot because you kind of say, well, I can break it down. It's a mortgage, it's 30 years. I put down 10%, it's only 50K. And in reality, I'm only paying like around $3,000 a month. So in reality, it's only like around $1,200 more, but it's going towards my own property. All right, let's run the numbers here. Now, in order to figure out exactly if a home is actually gonna be worth it for you, the math is not that difficult. All you have to do is figure out exactly what is gonna be the cost associated with actually renting and what is gonna be the cost associated with actually buying the home. That's basically it. However, I am not the mathematician, so let's go over to this calculator online. now. Here is what the math tells us. Again, you can go to rent versus buy calculator on Google and click the one by smart assets to get to this website right here. And the idea is simple. If I were to buy a home for $500,000 compared to rent of 1826 and I put down 10%, which is like $50,000 down payment, the answer is, it only becomes worth me actually buying that home if I'm gonna stay there past 26 years. That basically means I have to stay there for 26 years to justify actually owning this home. So here are all the details, okay? If I rent for 26 years, I spend $737,000. If I basically <laughs> buy for 26 years, it ends up costing me around $735,000 even after I sell the property. So in reality, the idea is, yeah, with one you actually have equity, with one you spent your money, but what would be the difference if instead of actually buying this property, you went ahead and basically mathematically just invested all the extra money. So remember, to buy this property, you had to do two things, the down payment, the closing costs, and all the expenses every single month, which were about $1,200 more. So what would happen if you had invested that money into the stock market and it actually earned you around 12%? Well, the math is simple. Let's do it. 
So mathematically, if I decided not to buy that property and to grab the down payment and to grab the difference between the rent and the mortgage and just invest that money over 30 years, here's what would happen, okay? First of all, I would grab that $50,000 and I would basically invest it into some index funds to actually earn me around 12% a year. Now let's say over the life of the loan, which usually is around 30 years, I went ahead and put 30 years there. And the difference, which is like $1,200 a month between the rent and the mortgage, well, that's around $14,400 a year. And that's based on you have to make a lot of money to be able to invest this much money, like around $70,000 a year, okay? So overall, what does this give us? Overall, you could calculate, it gives us around $5.3 million. So by me renting, and also just invest in the difference and my down payments, I'll have $5.3 million in the next 30 years. Well, if I grabbed that money and had wasted it, for example, on my mortgage, what would have happened is in 30 years, I would have, for example, let's, let's get the exact numbers here because I love exact numbers. I would have a whopping like around 905,000. So let's round it up to a million. A million versus 5.3, 4 million is a big difference. So mathematically, the math is simple. The answers are in and it basically says, hey, it makes sense to go ahead and invest over going ahead and basically having to, oh my gosh, that was terrible. That's, that's, I had this whole idea where I would be moving the camera super cool. It did not work out. So mathematically, the numbers are fairly obvious. It basically means that buying a home doesn't make sense mathematically. You're better off just investing that money into the stock market. And basically in 30 years, you're going to have a lot more money. In this case, around five times the money just by staying and actually renting. Now, Here's my entire perspective, because really, that's my uncle's perspective, and that's just one way, whether you put that money in the stock market, you put it into real estate, you put it into a business, you put it into something that makes you money, obviously it's gonna earn you a lot more money than you're actually gonna make in that property by buying a property, because it has a lot of costs associated with it. However, I disagree, and here's where my disagreement comes into place, because automatically, whenever you introduce the ability to actually put your money to work, you also introduce the ability of losing money and actually losing your capital and running risks of things personally going wrong in your life, whether you lose your job, whether the stock market is down during that decade by half or whatever, right? A lot of things can happen and then you kind of end up in a stuck situation where you got to weather the storm. So my idea is this and my answer is this. I don't disagree that that works, but why not go ahead and just do both? Now, let me break this down exactly. Again, remember, I could either go ahead and buy the home or I could go ahead and basically invest. In reality, no, I can do both. So if I went ahead and I said, well, maybe I won't buy a property for a half a million dollars. I'll buy a property I can basically pay off in 15 years instead. On top of that, I'm going to try to invest basically 20% of my income. In this case, let's say 20% of $70,000 is around like $14,000 a year. So if you were to invest, for 15 years, in 15 years, what do you have? You have a property that is fully yours, and you also have an investment account at 12%, which is worth around $584,000. So in total, you have a combined net worth of around roughly a million dollars. But then, if you keep investing that same amount over the next 15 years, well, you're gonna have a whopping $3,784,000 which is around like 2.7, 2.4 million dollars less than you would by investing that money. But what happens is you don't have to worry about your cost of living being so high. Don't have to worry about you losing your job. It's more of a question of do you want more money because mathematically you'll have more money or do you want to have a plan where if things go wrong, you can kind of figure out exactly what you're going to do. That's the idea. So when I think about why I made the decision to go ahead and buy a home and actually try to pay it off as fast as possible, so I own this home right here. Although mathematically it is a destructive, bad decision, piecewise, it allows me to operate in a sense of comfortability, meaning I can invest knowing that I own my own home. 
I can invest knowing that basically my cost of living is very low, so I don't have to worry about if I lose my job. I can always just find something else to do because I don't have that many bills anymore. So having a home enables me to withstand the storm and be a better investor. While, for example, just renting a home, in reality, when you get to that end point, if things don't go well or something wrong happens, you're always just paying that bill. So here's the overall thing here. So what is right? So what exactly is the answer? Should you be looking to actually buy or should you be looking to rent? My answer is simple. It all depends on exactly what your goals are and what your level of risk actually is. And in reality, for a short period of time, I recommend everybody rent because it's important not to just buy a home when you're not ready to own a home and then you end up stuck with a property that costs a lot of money and you're not even in the place you want to be. Maybe the property market actually went down. The idea is it's more important to say, hey, I'm going to rent for a while, maybe five years, maybe 10 years, doesn't matter. I'm going to save up some money for a down payment. And then when the time comes, I'm going to go ahead and buy a property, but never stop investing. And you know, one person that does this very well, his name is Ramit Sethi. And he basically, he has a bunch of money to be able to basically buy a home whenever he wants to, but he basically still rents because when you live, for example, in a place like New York City, where the rent is like $3,000, but an apartment can be like a million or more, the answer is renting does make sense. So there is no rule of thumb here. There is no exact answer. The answer is it all depends on the situation, on the mathematics, on your philosophy, and what your goals actually are. Overall, my goals are simple. I want financial freedom. I want to get there fast. And I care a lot about security and I'm very risk averse. So owning a home right now might cost me a little in the future. But because I'm still investing most of my money and I'm also young and I'm doing it for the long term, in the end, I'm still going to have more than enough money. And because I don't have that much risk to worry about, there is a more likelihood that I won't actually interrupt my investments. So overall, the answer is it depends. So as always, guys, thanks for watching. If you made it all the way to this part of the video, comment down below, rent or buy. So I know you made it all the way to the end and also answer that question. What exactly are you planning to do in the next 12 months or in the next five years or whatever? Comment down below, let me know. And on top here is another video and over here is my face. Click and subscribe. And as always, Long Term Team officially out. Follow me on Instagram at Tommy Bryson for more content and stuff like that. Peace.